In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to work around the limited resolution and the pulse width trigger of our Infinium oscilloscopes. Here I have an example scenario where I might want to trigger on a very specific pulse width, and I'm not able to in a straightforward way given the controls that are available in the trigger menu. So a little about the signals I'm looking at. On channel one here, I have a clock, many cycles of a clock that's nominally about nine and a half megahertz. And in the purple trace down below, this is a measurement trend where I'm plotting the positive pulse width of every cycle on this clock versus time. And as you can see, this positive pulse width hangs out at the 52.6 nanosecond level or thereabouts for most of the time. And then every millisecond, there's a big frequency deviation and that pulse width drops down below 52.1 nanoseconds. So I've set this up to happen every millisecond, but in the real world, maybe this only happens once an hour or once a day or once a week, something like that. And in that kind of case, you definitely want a true hardware trigger to catch this event, even if it only happens one time. You wouldn't want to rely on a software-based trigger such as InfiniScan zone triggering, for example, um, because that would that has dead time associated with it and you wouldn't be guaranteed to catch the event as you would with a true hardware trigger. So in a perfect world, I just go into my trigger menu, select the pulse width trigger and dial in a value of 52.1 nanoseconds. But as you can see, that snaps down to 52.0. And the reason is my resolution is half a nanosecond. So it would appear that I'm stuck and I really don't have a way to trigger uh, on these infrequent events that are not quite 52 nanoseconds, just a little bit higher than that. And if I go to 52.5, then I'm going to catch a lot of this stuff that uh, maybe I don't want. So what to do? Well, what I can do here is zoom in on the pulse, take a closer look at this and get a little creative and essentially trick the trigger circuit into giving me more resolution than it appears to at first glance. And the way I can do that is by adjusting the trigger threshold. So I have a, a trigger of 52 and a half nanoseconds. I'll go ahead and hit the run button here. And as we can see from the trend, we've got one cycle plot in the trend and 52.4 nanoseconds is about what I'm capturing. All right, so that's fine. Now if I Go down to 52 nanoseconds. We know that never happens. So I don't get any more triggers. But you'll notice, of course, these pulses, these edges are not infinitely fast. And there's, uh, if we make the pulse width measurement down below, lower part of the pulse, we'll get a bigger number than we will if we make the measurement up here. Now, by default, the trigger level is going to be around the 50% level right here. And uh, that's where it, the measurement is defined for the trigger circuit. Note that that's independent of the threshold used for these measurements here, which we don't need to change. Now, so we're in the triggered mode, we're in the run mode, and we're just waiting for a trigger to occur. It's not happening. Uh, but if I go a little higher, I'm gonna rotate the front panel trigger level knob up, up, up until I start to trigger. And now I'm starting to capture the worst case events that are happening just below 52.1 nanoseconds. And so by simply adjusting that trigger threshold a little higher, I can now capture this event very reliably. And you'll see as I go higher, I tend to capture more on the trend. It goes higher as well as I rotate the trigger level higher and I get more and more exclusive and get into the worst case events as I lower that trigger level. So you can really fine tune this and get the uh, a much better effective resolution for that pulse width trigger than you can otherwise achieve. So, so now what I'd like to do is zoom out a little bit and just confirm that we are really capturing the worst case events. There you can see that negative peak and we're right around there every time. And if I drop my trigger level down just a touch, then I'll get closer and closer to that worst case peak being at center screen. And so what I'll do at this point is change my repetition rate for this frequency anomaly from a kilohertz to one hertz. So I've changed my generator and now we're seeing every second 
exactly once per second we are triggering and that tells me we have a very reliable hardware trigger here that is not likely to miss any of these events.